Hello, all of you vain, gloriously wonderful people. This is the Coil Inductor. And I'm about to find out if it'll off-road. This is World Off-Road episode number 206. And we are in the middle of the San Andreas Mercenary season. Now you may be wondering, how do you know this is a coil? Well, um, because when I logged in, when this bike came out, the day it came out, it said uh, the Coil Inductor is now available for purchase at Pedal and Metal. So, I'm assuming the game knows what it's talking about. A lot of in-game, or not in-game websites, but a lot of just GTA websites have it listed as uh, no manufacturer. But uh, I did happen to catch that when it when it came up. And wow, when you boost, this thing doesn't want to turn. Um, so if you're not familiar with what the inductor is, it's, it's supposed to be an e-bike, but instead it has like a curse system. Um, that, that's not really how e-bikes work with short bursts. They they have a, a battery and an electric motor that can just propel the bike without you pedaling at all. Um, but I guess this is the closest thing Rockstar could get to an e-bike. Um, <laughs> it's, it's weird. Uh, however, it does correspond with the junk energy time trials that I believe change every single day. I haven't tried them yet. Um, I'm pretty sure I noticed that it was in a different place when I recorded this video than it was when the day they came out. I don't know. I really don't play GTA Online. I'm GTA Online. That's the name of the game. I really don't play it that much anymore. Um, you know, I, I still enjoy Bullet Off-Road. I still enjoy getting on and customizing the cars. Uh, but beyond that, I don't know. Game's gone downhill. Um, Rockstar seems more interested in just milking every last dollar out of players than they are actually providing content to bring players back. Um, it, they just want to do a, a fear of missing out type situation um, and and get people to play that way. And, and I don't know, it's kind of nonsense. Uh, so I'm just kind of over it. And uh, because of that, I, I don't think I'm going to buy GTA 6, which is sad because it'll be the first GTA game that I've not played. Um, all the way back to the original GTA 1 and 2. I've played those after I played GTA 3. Um, I had Vice City Stories, Liberty City Stories. I even did Chinatown Wars on the DS. I mean, I have played all the GTAs and loved every one of them. Okay, not so much Chinatown Wars. I'm not really a handheld gaming person. And I didn't play Liberty City Stories or um, Vice City Stories on... Uh, what was it, the Vita back then? I don't even remember. It was some PlayStation uh, handheld. I waited until they came out for the PlayStation themselves. Um, and you can just play them on the regular console. And that's when I played them. Um, but yeah, not looking forward to GTA 6 because of all the nonsense Rockstar is doing with GTA Online. Uh, very sad to see such a, a great franchise kind of bite the dust. Just bite the dust, really. I mean, it, it's it's lost relevance. Um, I might play the story mode, possibly, after I see some reviews, but I doubt I'll venture into the online aspect of it at all, unless Rockstar changes their ways. But anyways, that's all brought about by an e-bike that sucks, <laughs> and it does suck. It's not really all that good. Um, here in another minute and a half, we'll talk about stats, but while we're waiting for that, you can take part in all of our community videos as well as our community live streams, whether it's GTA Online or other games that we play in our community videos. Uh, all you need to do is be a member of the Vainglorious Discord server uh, and then play on PC. We 99.99999% of the time, or in, for the past five years, it's probably been 100% of the time, uh, play on PC. So, yeah, but we would still love to have you. As part of our community, even if you don't play on PC, uh, we have a lot of players that, who play a lot of different games on every platform imaginable. Um, plus, we have all kinds of other topics that we talk about on the Vainglorious Discord. And uh, we'd love to have you. Don't just watch the videos. Come be a part of the community and uh, have a say in, in what happens in the videos. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. And of course, there is a version of the video for supporters only where uh, you actually get to hear the Discord conversation and see some of the outtakes and shenanigans that we get up to. Uh, and that is available for channel supporters only, whether a Patreon pledge, Twitch subscriber, right here on YouTube, become a member, 
or on the Vainglorious Discord server itself. You can do a subscription there and get access to that ad-free, less edited, behind-the-scenes version of Ruled Off-Road. We are finally up. Four minutes, 46 seconds flat. So, will it off-road? Honk, honk. Um, yeah, I mean, it will. It's bicycle, so I wasn't expecting anything too terribly fast. However, I wasn't expecting to be as bad as it was. Um, we had to wait on top of the mountain for sunrise, so uh, it, it was sunset as we finished, and now it's sunrise. Uh, so, out of the 399 vehicles that we have tested as of this video, it is 342nd. Yeah, uh, not good. Uh, I know it's bike, but it's an e-bike boost, and you would have expected a little bit more. It is 8.85 seconds slower than the technical custom that we did just a week or two ago. Uh, and it is 6 tenths of a second faster than the Hermes. In the cycles that we've tested, we've tested three of them. It's 26 and a half seconds slower than the Scorcher. Well, 26.4, so let's just round up, call it 26.5. Yeah, um, the Scorcher is way faster, and then of course the Endurex race bike is faster still. I don't have the spreadsheet pulled up in front of me, but if you're looking to do bicycle races, just stick to the race bike. It is so much faster. Uh, this thing's just not worth it. Even if you get a lot of boosts, it, it's just not. It it doesn't give you the speed. Um, in terms of San Andreas Mercenaries DLC, we've tested eight vehicles as of this video, and it is no surprise date. Dead last. Um, which means we're probably going to be racing it and will it off-road with races. That's kind of scary. Um, my predictions right now is that it's going to be the next car and the monstrosity that we wind up racing for the, the fastest. And then the slowest are going to be this bike and um, the, uh, the Ghostbusters car. I can't think of its name off the top of my head. Um, but that's that's my thought. But yeah, it is uh, 1 minute 48.78 seconds slower than the Cleek Wagon. And the Cleek Wagon wasn't fast. Uh, so the bike, not doing so hot. Not at all. But it will give us plenty of opportunity, I'm sure. For you to play Willet Off-Road Bingo, because it just takes so long to get up and down the mountain. Uh, there is a link in the description down below to Willet Off-Road Bingo. You can click on that, and then when you get to the Bingo Maker website, just click on Generate a New Card. And then when things happen in the video, if they're on your card, mark them off. And if you get Bingo, let us know about it and be our sixth ever winner of Willet Off-Road Bingo. Uh, you don't get a prize, just bragging rights. Maybe one day when I you know, strike, strike it rich and... Make all that big YouTube money and living in my big YouTube money mansion. Yeah, right. That'll never happen. Uh, you know, I would love to give away stuff, uh, but I can't afford it. Uh, YouTube doesn't even pay my bills. But YouTube barely covers the cost of my editing software every month. You know, so I kind of break even on what I spend. Um, it doesn't even come close to paying a bill. Uh, neither does Twitch. And that's fine. I still love doing it. Uh, though it only has about two more years. If I if I haven't, you know, done something a little better within the next two years, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be done. But uh, we're down three minutes six seconds. Nice jump, hobo. You know, it's not like your car. We couldn't expect anything too spectacular. So we were at the top of the mountain on a bicycle, about to drive off the side. So uh, you would think that's gonna mean uh, a lot of death uh, coming, especially on some of these landings. I am trying to wheelie as best I can and try to smooth out the landings, but ow, yeah, that that was painful. Uh, didn't die surprisingly. Uh, I guess I rolled just right. Not <laughs> that cracks me up the bike and then Kiltastic goes flying past me. I thought he had died because he head first into that rock. However, Homo was coming quickly behind us and was shouting, "Look out, death incoming!" Um, so I hightailed it out of there, uh, and, and just left, uh, Destin behind to, to deal with the hobo. Uh, you can see the hobo, though, I believe is getting closer and closer, but I'm surprised I didn't die. Um, you know, motorcycles, bicycles, usually much death involved, because you can fall off. Uh, but not so much here, and I mean, I'm kind of out of the danger zone for areas where you can really, you know get some serious air and take such a hard landing that you'll fall off. You know, now it would just be me running into something like a moron that would cause me to fall off. 
It did take half my health, though, so, you know, significant injury was done, but not enough to kill me, and I, I was pleasantly surprised. By the way, that does not count as a thread needle. If you have thread needle on your card, that did not count. Yeah, I was at full throttle, but it's a tiny little bicycle going through a massive culvert. I hear Hobo behind me honking. Um, so you can't count that one. And it goes by. And it's going really slow. So it's real easy to get that through the tunnel at throt full speed. At throttle. I don't even know where that came from. Uh, but it's easy, so it doesn't count. And nice little jump, though, out of the ditch. Almost got right over my hobo, but we are down. One minute, 52 seconds. Let's take a look at the damage on the inductor. And it's a bit dirty. And I'm injured. Nice, nice trick there, Destin. Well done. Way to show off for YouTube. Look, Mom, I need a YouTube video. <laughs> Destin knows I love him. Uh, there are sport vehicles. I don't know what's up with Hobo's hood and trunk being open, but hey, there they are. Uh, and there they are from the rear, but that is, that's rude, Destin. That is going to bring us to our next vehicle. And oh my God, do I love this thing. The Pinot La Carousse. I think I got it right. I've actually went to Google Translate and, and looked it up and had it pronounce it and practiced several times just to get it. So the fun thing is Pinot, clearly a, a, a riff on Renault, so a little on the nose there. But Pinot means sheepish, according to Google Translate. So if, I, I don't speak French. I'm, I'm just going off of what Google Translate said. So sheepish for... For uh, the, fir the first name of the car, the, the manufacturer, I don't know what Renault means. Um, shit, French car that has barely hung on over the years and nearly gone bankrupt several times and been bought out by who God knows how many people. I don't know. Aren't they, like, in a tie-up with Nissan now? Of all companies to be in a tie-up with. Um, God, this thing flies. Look at it go. Uh, but La Carousse means the runner. So it's a sheepish runner, a shy runner. So it goes really fast, but it doesn't want you to look at it. Uh, but and it does go really fast. This thing was an absolute pleasure to drive up the mountain. Uh, not a challenge at all. Mainly because it has grip for days. You just have to be a little bit careful as you're getting on the throttle in some of the turns. The back end does, it does have limits. It will let go. Um, but it's unbelievably quick. And the, the nice thing about it is you can turn in the same run time and time and time again uh just over and over again you can get within half a second of the same time uh going up the mountain because it's just an easy car to drive it, it doesn't bounce over the bumps really bad uh it has good brakes to so you can carry a lot of speed right up until the turns and then hit the brakes and then get right back on it and then of course it is an absolute grip monster this thing just doesn't let go uh even though it's just rear wheel drive you can just get full on the throttle and it doesn't spin its wheels Every once in a while, you'll hear, hear a wheel let go a little bit, but then it immediately, immediately finds that grip again. There's very few cars I will take full throttle through this section, uh, just because of the bumps and everything and the unpredictability. But this car is just so planted. Hey, it's being a junk energy time trial from earlier. Uh, but this car is just so planted that I spent most of this run full throttle. Uh, and can we just not have the dings, please? And look at it, just go right up the side. Just like it's nothing. And we are up in two minutes. 19, almost 20 seconds. So, will it off-road? Oh, yeah. That... A couple years ago, that would have been good for the number one position. Unfortunately, things have come along, and it's not good for the number one position. Uh, out of 399, it is fourth. Uh, which isn't bad. I mean, that's top 1%. You know, that is... That's good. Uh, barely top 1%, but it is top 1%. It is 5.65 seconds slower than the Reaver. And 1.4 seconds... One... Why do I always struggle when there's a 7? 1. 1.47 seconds faster than the Shinobi. So, sandwiched in between a couple bikes. Uh, in terms of the 77 sports cars that we have tested, which is just an absurd number... Uh, it's first. It is the new reigning champ. It knocked uh, the Issy Sport, which was, has been our number one fastest sports car for a long time. 
and for a long time held the number one spot in Moonlit Off-Road. Like, for a very long time it held that spot. Uh, however, the La Cruz, 3.03 seconds faster than the Issy Sport, which is crazy. It is about seven seconds slower than our number one car, uh, the uh, Drogler, or how you say it. Oh! <laughs> Yikes. Um... And of course, with that speed, and I kind of alluded to this earlier, in the San Andreas Mercenaries DLC, it is number one. It is 3.0 seconds. There it is, a seven at the end, and I, I screwed up. It is 3.07 seconds faster than the monstrosity, uh, which is why I think those are two are probably going to race. I, I don't see the um, Hellhound uh, track car, what's it called? The Hot Ring Hellhound, Hellring... I don't know. Hellring, that would be Hellring Hothound. There's a name. Uh, I just, no, never mind. I'm not going to finish that thought. Uh, but uh, yeah, the the Bravado NASCAR, uh, which is funny because Dodge doesn't do NASCAR anymore. But whatever. Whatever. It's GTA. Um, I think those will be the two fastest. I don't think that, that NASCAR is going to do anything. And the, the big. Uh, Ghostbusters car probably going to be slower than the clique, so we'll probably be racing that. Oh, hello again, Dustin. And look at Hobo. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> We're back at the top for our damage descent to see uh, what type of abuse this wonderful, fun, I absolutely in love with electric car can uh, sustain a damage and, and how well it does. And you know what? It got a really good start, and I had a lot of speed going down there. Um, so it, it's taken some hits, but. It's really easy to control an air, and when it lands, it doesn't bounce around a lot. It's like I said, it's just, it's just all business. This, this car just doesn't play around. It just does what it's designed to do very well, which it's supposed to be a rally car, so you expect it to be really good here off road. Um, and it is, it is phenomenal. Granted, you know, it, it was never designed to be thrown down a mountain. Then again, what car was? But. It, it still does really well. Look at that. I don't know I've ever sailed that far off of that little hill. Normally, I land at the base of the trees, if not right before them. Now, there is a thread of the needle. This thing went right through it. And again, this car, that almost was whatever on the side. This car is just uh, just so good. Um, however, I didn't anticipate a rock. And, well, I got, I got a little stuck. And then I got a little confused about which way to turn the wheel. I had only been awake for about 40 minutes when we recorded this car. Missed my uh, woodpile jump. Big sad. But we are down. One minute. 22.3. Second look at the damage on the La Cruz. Most of the lights and windows are gone. The doors, the hood, and the trunk will no longer close. And it, even though there was some camber already, the wheels are much, much more cambered now. Very bent. And my god, it's such a good looking car. I, I just love it. It's fantastic. Uh, Hobo's just chilling back there on the wood pile. Don't mind him. There are the support vehicles. Uh, very French. very uh, And also a very small crowd. A lot of people had things to do today uh, when we recorded. So that's fine. We'll have a bigger crowd next time. But that's going to do it for episode number 206 for Will Off-Road. I want to thank you for your time. There are a million other things, quite literally, that you could watch on YouTube. And you chose my silly little Will Off-Road videos. Thank you. Uh, it is it is not unappreciated that, that you chose to spend your time with me today. And until next time, I'm Brandon reminding you to stay vainglorious.